Hello, everyone. It's uh, half a turnout. Good lunch, apparently. People still still digesting. So this is supposed to be a lightning talk, they told me. So don't blink. You'll miss it. We'll go fast. I promise. Right. So I'll start straight away. Creating a pipeline from scratch sucks. Like, it sucks big time. I've done it a few times before, uh, realizing that there must be a better way. I was hoping there must be a better way. It's not just a question of a few scripts put together that do their job well. Sooner or later, pipeline in pretty much every studio turns into a major software engineering efforts. And let's be honest, vast majority of the studios are not software companies. Nowhere near it. Uh, at Input, uh, about five years ago, we set out to change this, or at least to improve the situation. And we made it our mission uh, to simplify the process of building pipelines and automating workflows for creative studios. And I'm going to show you how we think we're achieving this uh, and what we're doing to get there. Now, we've been at it for a while. Uh, we've gone through a few iterations of the software that we're writing over the past five years. As you can see, we are keeping up with industry standards of changing product names roughly every couple of years as well. So uh, we have that covered. Uh, nevertheless, uh, in January this year, we finally, under a completely new rewritten architecture that took us almost two years in the making, we have released uh, Ion Open Studio Platform. For those that have some historical knowledge, it used to be called Pipe, then Open Pipe. Now it's Ion. We won't change it for another two years, I promise. That's the plan. So version 1.0 was released. But uh, what is it? It's an open source highly scalable modular pipeline platform for studios of all sizes. We have it as our ethos that studios of all sizes should have access to powerful pipeline, not just the ones of the likes of Pixar, Animal Logic, and those that we see presentations from at events like this, but also the small and medium-sized ones. But they grow, so we made it in a way that they can grow and they will not need to change all of their pipeline tooling when they go from 50 to 100 to 500 and they realized, oh crap, we can't do this anymore. Um, so what does it do? Really, what I said at the beginning, it simplifies the process of building a pipeline. And for many studios, it works out of the box and they don't need to do anything else on top of it. Um, but what is it actually made of? Well, a ton of Python code, but you probably figured that. We, we build it into three distinct layers and more will come over time probably. Uh, now layers, we call them layers because they are distinctly usable on their own. Uh, the server one uh, is the most important, but it is absolutely viable for a studio to pick one of these layers and get inspired by it, uh, use the code, rewrite it, uh, or use it as a package. Of course, if you do use it as a package, you get more than some of its part, or at least that's what we are hoping for. Um, the second layer is pipeline, uh, which is your integrations into DCCs, all of the business logic of the pipeline uh, uh, that you would like to have. And uh, recently at the Input Community Summit this year, we have announced that we are also venturing into production tracking layer, uh, which we are now uh, in the very uh, deep coding of this particular thing. And first features are already out and have been out uh, for a while now. So I'll speak to all three about them very briefly. If you want to know more, please uh, have a look at our other presentations where we go into more details. For example, the one from FMX is actually public, so you can go to our YouTube and find it. Uh, so the server is the backbone and the brain of everything that happens in ION. It is released under Apache 2 license uh, and will stay under Apache 2 license. It's important to note. Uh, it is, uh, it's been written for completely from scratch on a stack that has been proven extremely robust for much larger applications than what we use in visual effects industry. We didn't try to be too creative. As you can see, the stack is fairly standard. We know it works. We know it's going to work for, for a while. Uh, to run Ion Server, you have two options. You can self-host it on-prem uh, without telling us completely. It's up to you. You can also host it on uh, Input Cloud, which is our SaaS platform, which also provides for the on-prem instances it provides uh, downloads and marketplace for add-ons and anything that we ever release, any new updates, you can simply run on-prem. Uh, you can be behind a firewall. When you need to download any new versions of add-ons that we have or new integrations, you can connect to Input Cloud, to the marketplace, download them, and disconnect again. So it's totally up to you how you use this. Uh, so uh, Input Cloud is now live, and it's available for everyone as well. So the smaller ones that do not want to host it themselves, it is a totally viable option. Uh, now. 
what it gives you. Uh, the server acts as a source of truth. It provides a centralized uh, data model for everything. We can map it to all other production solutions out there. Uh, the data model is somewhat customizable. You can change a lot about it, but we made a very strict decision that speed is paramount for us in the product. So it will allow, we, will, we will allow you to change data model up to a point where the speed is not affected. So uh, there are fairly strict typed models across the whole product, so we can actually be very fast. Uh, you can throw ridiculous amounts of uh, data onto this, and it's going to be nearly instant API responses. Uh, you get web UIs for artists, TDs, and soups that we are expanding uh, literally on a weekly basis. Uh, of course, you get uh, developer documentation. We have React component library for all of the front ends, so you can augment it massively uh, as much as you want. Uh, but also multiple APIs, uh, REST API, Python API, GraphQL for any super complex queries that you might need to run against your database. And C++ is in progress because we already finished the uh, uh, the uh, OpenUSD asset resolver natively within ION. For that, we, of course, needed to implement certain amount of uh, C++ API as well. Important to know, if you write your own add-on, which you can extend ION with anything, you can even extend the REST API with your own, uh, your own API calls on top of that on your own API route. So you can use this as a base and build your Studio pipeline on top of it, including your own Studio API. It's fully modular. Uh, the pipeline. Uh, that would be too long if I was talking about the details of that. The important point is we say it integrates with everything. Uh, if it has at least a little bit of API, there are things that we integrated that have no API, so your mileage will vary. Uh, this is not exhaustive. There is a lot more integrations out there that we have, a lot of them provided by community now, a lot of them written by us officially, and we are now in collaborations with some vendors to, uh, to add more. Uh, we also are uh, big fans of Academy Software Foundation. So if, there, if a project is viable within the pipeline, which all of these are and anything else, we do our best not to reinvent the wheels. Uh, we also try to do our part, uh, and we are part of the Open Asset IO uh, steering committee. And as far as I'm aware, ION might be the first product that has a native implementation of Open Asset IO Manager in there. So if you want to try it and see how it actually could operate with a production tracking feature, uh, production tracking product or pipeline, you can have a look at the ION implementation, which is there for reference. You can give it a shot. Uh, now, the production. Yes, we are writing our own as well. Uh, that's going to be viable for a certain amount of studios in a very short uh, time. However, Everything we do, we do with the ethos that you should have the freedom to choose. This is how ION has been designed and how ION has been written. Whether you use FTREC, uh, Flow Production Tracker, Kitsu, Aquarium, there is Soko in here, or if you use uh, other auxiliary production and efficiency tools like there's Hybob, Slack, Discord, Clockify, whatever it is, it can be integrated. All of these are already integrated natively into ION, so we really couldn't care less which production tracking do you actually use. Uh, you, should be, you should have the freedom to choice. So if someone is a vendor and they need to use ShotGrid for client number one and FTREC for client number two, and they want to use maybe ION native for their internal uh, projects, this should be possible without having to rewrite all of the expensive code that you have done for your actual business logic inside of DCCs and inside of Houdini and Maya and all of these applications. So this is the idea. You own your data. That data speaks to wherever place you happen to change your statuses. Uh, or do your reviews, because that's essentially what these tools are doing, ultimately. Uh, we are upgrading our production tracking capabilities roughly weekly nowadays, so there's a separate team that we've built that is pushing as much as possible uh, onto that. The freedom to choose is also when it comes to deployment. Uh, we vouch that it's always going to be fully possible to migrate between on-prem instances and anything hosted on our cloud. Uh, the underlying core and data models are identical, even though the cloud offers a few extra features in there, but they are mostly infrastructural that you could achieve yourself as well with a little bit of engineering on-prem. Um, so I have about a minute left. Beautiful. So to wrap up, I want to give you a bit of statistics so you get an idea of the scale that we are at right now after five years of operation. So. As over 20 people working full time on the project, uh, on the product at the moment in the company, and lots more uh, external contributors, um, we have over I think it's actually over 65 contri individual contributors to the project over the pi uh, past years. Some of them are ours. Some of them are from contributing companies. Uh, we have 1.7 thousand community members on our Discord server. Uh, a lot of them are massively active. So if you need help. 
we can give you some support, but also the community itself will help you out if you want to deploy or give it a shot. We've spent over 80,000 dev hours on the project since the version zero of Pipe until the current state of ION. This has been substantial investment, and all of it has been funded directly by studios that are using it, studios that have helped us over the years, that have bought support, that have bought any of our add-ons or anything like this. So there's been a lot more than this, but it's now hard to figure out what was the product and what was support. Uh, also, since the start of 2024, when we released ION 1.0, over 500 on-prem ION servers have connected to the ION uh, marketplace. Of course, that doesn't mean that all of these are active and live right now, but we know roughly half of them is actually actively using ION to some degree. So the adoption over the past half year has been substantial, and uh, we are very happy about it. You can see the map of where these connections are coming from. The sizes of circles are the sizes of deployments. They are just per country, not per actually city, so don't get too excited. Um, uh, and yeah, and as a last one, I need to thank some of the studios. These are not all of us, all of them, but this is most of the companies that have supported us over the years by funding, contributions, whatever, you name it, they have been there. Some of them are using it, some of them have never used it, and they still contributed massive amounts of code or massive um, amounts of funding to the project. So thank you very much for all of these. Uh, please have a look at the product, have a look at our other presentations. Uh, join the community at Input.io, and keep in mind we're just getting started. The roadmap for this year has been full, and we are so far kind of on track with this. So fingers crossed we'll get there by the end of the year, and then uh, we'll continue from there. Uh, we have two more buffs at the, at the SIGGRAPH tomorrow. We're going to be showing off the results of the pipeline survey that we conducted at the end of last year. Uh, we had over 110 studios respond, uh, respond to the pipeline survey and have some really interesting results. So please come to the buff. The, it will be public as well after the buff. And on Tuesday, we'll be talking about how to govern a project that has grown out of scale than we expected. And it's running independently without outside investment at the moment. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, grab us around the graph. We are here till Thursday. Look for these t-shirts. They're hard to miss. Thank you very much.